There it is. It's live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Basic Discussion 101, Episode 2, The Gathering, uh, <laughs> we, in which we're going to discuss Basic Adventuring 101, the, the web series about LARP, and specifically today we're talking about Episode 4. Um, I have with me today some very awesome people who helped to work on said web series. Um, I am Person Brumley, and I am the creator and uh, also one of the actresses. Um, and uh, next up, there is Liz. Liz, go ahead and introduce yourself. Um, I'm Liz Stong. I am a writer and script writer, and I had a couple other jobs, but, you know, they weren't important. Uh, Kat. I am Kat. I did special effects makeup and not sleeping. Helped with kitten wrangling and I adopted one of them. Oh, shrimp. shrimp. She's gotten nice Aww. and fat now after I got her fixed. It's like she's a real cat. <laughs> she, she wasn't before. She was so small. Uh, Blair! Hi, well, my name is Blair. I was Cat's Canvas, more or less. I uh, played the Goblin Shaman, and uh, yeah, that is that is me. This is, this, is, uh, this is my episode four I am in, and I will throw to KT. Hey, I'm KT. I do uh, color correction, so pretty much work on it after everyone else has already done their stuff, but before sound. Yeah, man. I mean, we've got quite a team actually doing all this post stuff that like nobody's actually met, and really, I'm the only one who's actually talked to. <laughs> um, and we're gonna get to talk about a lot of these different things, which is really fun. Uh, a lot of things that um, you wouldn't know just by watching the web series. So um, to start off, we're gonna talk about you know episode four and kind of what went, went into to making that episode. Um, uh, hey Blair, what happened in this episode exactly? Well, um, at the beginning of this episode, the Foxdales bust into the tent and rudely interrupt a nice conversation I was having with Karen, which. Uh, bristled me a little bit, but uh, after they came in all blustery and rah, 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 calmed them down, and I offered them loot to kill the bad guy, which they seemed to enjoy that, and so they went off and attempted to find the bad guy. They didn't get very far, though. No, no, they got to the forest, and and, and then I think they got hungry. <laughs> yeah, Liz, what... what? What, what happened after they went into the forest, exactly? Uh, they argued, and they got hungry. <laughs> That's right. As any good adventurer is wont to do, they, uh, they argue about stuff, and they eat. So, yep. the episode ends with everybody running off to go get quesadillas from the gingerbread house which is what we named the tavern after the very place that we were staying for filming. Um, we stayed in a little house that we rented in uh, Hocking Hills, Ohio, uh, called the Gingerbread House, and it is adorable. And uh, everything that you see in the next episode after that is within the actual place where we were basically living for like nine days. We also got to see uh, a new character at the very end, uh, the character played by Momo O'Brien. Oh, yes. 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 <laughs> Shows up at the end, and everybody's like, oh, cool. <laughs> a lot of my friends going, who's the druid? Cool. And I'm like, oh, you'll see, you'll see. <laughs> I like it. Um, and Kat, who uh, worked very hard on all the makeup, um, Cat basically came up with most of Mirren's look. Um, I I can't remember the whole process of of how we came to like the scar and everything. Do you do you remember Cat? Um. No. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it had something to do with. <laughs> there was something to do with this. It was the same scar that was on all of your hands, except for yours, Karen, Echo, Kristen. 
because uh, yours was slightly different. <laughs> Who uh, am I? <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I remember. So you're all of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but we we decided that like something about like that would be evil, a freaky scar. And I'm so glad we went with just one contact lens because that was that was rough. She had never worn them before, uh, and so she had such was, a uh, hard time getting that one contact in. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, I felt well, so yeah. bad. Well, because Epic Armory, who provided basically all of her costume itself, um, they like they are asking all the things that we wanted, and I was thinking like, wouldn't it be really cool if our bad guys had like contact lenses? Like that's a neat thing. And so they sent us. I mean, the gracious sponsors that they are, they sent us, sent us um, like three sets of this orange um, UV light like contact lenses that like when you actually like shine UV light on them, they like they glow and like they're pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I uh, poor Mo who had yeah who had never worn contact lenses before. <laughs> I think we made it work eventually. We did. I think we had this. We had to go online at some point and find a tutorial on how to take out contact lenses. She, uh, that some people have shy eyes, and so it was just like whenever something was coming at it, it would just close and squint, and so it made it difficult. And she felt bad, and we all felt bad. It was just, you know, it before and after. So. Yeah, well, I've, I've never worn trooper. contacts either, so I I'm glad the goblin shaman <laughs> didn't have to wear them because I don't know how, how well I would have done either. So, well, we're just gonna have to make another character for you for season two that has them, just to uh -oh. make things even. As long as I get a name, I'll be I'll be happy. No, ne Liz, never <laughs> give him a name. Never. Blair, oh if you don't gosh. wear contacts, I've got plenty of these googly eyes. Just. Sold. <laughs> All right, Liz, write in googly eyes. I feel like this Rawr, is our actual awesome. villain. I feel like this is the process, Liz, where it's like, so what's gonna happen uh, in in any episode? It's like, Liz, write in this thing, and then you sigh, and then do whatever the heck you want. <laughs> I think you're like two minutes gonna forget what you asked for, so. You said you spent two minutes just figuring out what I what I asked for. No, no, no! In two minutes, you're gonna forget what you asked for. Oh, that makes way more sense. You're right. I forget pretty much everything I demand. <laughs> uh, um. do a plot. I don't know what you just said, but googly eyes is probably part of it. That was very Doctor Spazzo right there. That was awesome. It was. Mm. I wore these to work. Uh, you, I'm a grown-up team. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay, okay. So back on track, back on track. <laughs> Golly gee whiz willikers. Um, I didn't wear them driving, though. Good. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad that you survived and made it back home. <laughs> so, Kat, how, how long did you have to take to put me together every or when we, had, we put me together? I want to yeah. say round about two hours, but it's basically like as much time as I ha as as I have, I will use because I like to keep adding little detail things, and so it's one of those things like I've got ten more minutes. Okay, let's do this thing. Um, but that nose took a while to blend, and it kept popping up, which is kind of a shame. But oh god, when you did that, when you came for touch ups, I'm like, okay, look up, and then just all the sweat oh, that collected at the bottom no, of it, you're just like, no. oh. That was the grossest thing ever. I would lift up my nose or touch up, and it would just... Oh, oh, so nasty. <laughs> oh, God, that's disgusting. Yeah, that, 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 was, that was a secret between Cat and I until this very moment. I'm, I'm pretty sure we made loud noises and got everyone's attention. Oh, so bad. Why didn't you just stuff, like, tissue paper up it or something? <laughs> because I woke up at 5 in the morning and it didn't occur to me at that point. <laughs> oh, we, that's we so gross. We took it off, put tissue in it, and put it back on, and I don't think that happened again. But, but yeah. Like, I mean, the, the method to which you were applying the makeup was, like, an airbrush, 
and you were using. Mm -hmm. So you see, so you you had some green, you had some yellow, and you were blending it all in. It was, it was. Explain a bit about the process. I mean, this is your jam. This is your time. So uh, tell us a little bit about how you make up up the Goblin Shaman. I, I have several airbrushes, which are my fun toys, and I had some some colors, and I wanted to go with um, not just straight green because that's not how skin works. And so we did several different layers, and um, because alcohol makeup is really expensive, we went with water base on you since you didn't have an outdoor fight scene, um, which it was very hot up there anyway, so I wish that I would have sprung for all the alcohol makeup because there was a lot of touch-ups. Um, but it, it held up pretty well. Uh, but yeah, I think I started with a green base and then added some like dark blue, almost black, and some yellow, and just layers and layers and layers, and then... I put like a scar on your face because why not? And yeah, it was fun. And we oh the wig, we had this like Beatles wig. That was pretty cool. I like the wig. And then put a bunch of hair wax in it and some white thing. And and Maria had a oh, no, I had some like this hair extension braid. Yep. And uh, Maria had some feathers from something else. We just made this really ridiculous thing. And so it went from like okay, well he's Ringo. To, now that's a goblin shaman. <laughs> I th I think my favorite part about the whole goblin shaman was I was in full makeup on this the first day of shooting, if you will, technically the second day, but the first full day of shooting, and everybody arrived at the gingerbread house on that day. Um, well, most people arrived on that day, so they saw that they were introduced to me in full makeup, and I was like, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. The next day, almost all of them reintroduced themselves to me because they had. <laughs> No idea who I was. That's how good your makeup was. So kudos. To and and most of my friends and family had didn't believe it was me until I used my actual voice. And they're like, "Oh, it is you." And I'm like, "Yeah. <laughs> Why would I tell you to watch this thing if it wasn't me?" Oh man. Well, and Kat's such a trooper too. Like mm -hmm. she was the only makeup artist. Yeah. And we honestly should have had two people because we had that much makeup happening like all yeah. the time. And then Kat also was an actor, like, mm -hmm. played a character as well, and which you guys haven't met yet, but it's going to be amazing when you do. I um, slept in that prosthetic. Oh, my gosh. And you were up. You were always up. Way early. First like, up. Yeah. You basically had to be the first person up every day. Because... Because of aging Brad every single morning. <laughs> yeah, okay. So aging Brad. Like this, so th there were certain things that you had to do every day. Like there was the Goblin Shaman. But like, so that's one big makeup. I, like in episode four, that was there, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but, and, and there was Mirin, where there was like the, the scar and the contact lens and, you know, a little bit of like, um, like there was oh, a little... Veining things going on. Yeah, of it. some veining happening. And you also did ears for her, if I remember. Yeah. Um, Those were the other ears. They were much better than the ones that we had for the pilot. Yeah. And so, but <clears throat> for every episode, you also had to do Brad's aging and uh, Chloe's elf ears, right? Yeah. And then a version of her tattoo. And her tattoo. But, oh, and her tattoo. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about Brad's face. I mean, it's a great face. It's but. a great face. <laughs> but he's, he's, he's not um, uh, not old enough to be the character. When I showed up, I'm like, well, you know, there's Brad. He's about my age. And then I'm like, oh, Brad's not as old as he looks on the screen. <laughs> he looks no. much younger. He did a really good job with Brad. Really, really good job. Thank Come you. On. That was a lot of fun. Now, uh, what was the, what's the joke? We, you hired a 20-something-year-old uh, swordsman to play a 40-something-year-old archer? Yes. Yes, we did. Like, literally, that is exactly what we did. <laughs> the fight coordinators were so sad because he's got, like, the stage combat and the sword training and, like, yeah, this would be great. And he's like, yeah, I'm an archer. Well, yeah. but, but, you know, he got, is we'll, very... We'll get a fight scene at some he, point, right? archers dual wield. Come yeah. on. It's true. Also, there are things that you're going to see in Episode 7 that reveal that perhaps he has maybe used a different weapon at some time in his life. I was so happy that they had that, that I'm going to stop talking now. Spoilers. <laughs> spoilers, spoilers! No, no, none of that. No, I'm, I'm trying to get Liz to get a Fountain of Youth plot for, uh, for season two. So, like, in the out of game, yeah, I'll age him, but in game, now he's like a baby or something. Well, not a baby, but, you know. Then he gets to sleep and I get to sleep. It'll be great. 
that that face says no. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that the okay? Because this happened a lot with poor Liz, who is the writer and also the script supervisor, so was always on set with us. Um, how Liz, many times, you. Liz? How many times did you have to hear people saying, "Hey, Liz, in season two, can we do this?" Or that's when I'm like, it's already outlined. Yeah. I think yeah. that was the, that was the stock's answer. Oh, I've already written it. It's done. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nothing can In be changed. In season three, we're all vampires, right? Probably. Okay. Um, so none I of us just show up on film at all. It's just scenery and dialogue. <laughs> no, no, it's just rock paper scissors. Oh. Yeah, somebody does this, and then they just disappear. Oh, my gosh. Much like what Liz just did. <laughs> she did. <laughs> Oops. Liz just poofed. Oh, well. So, anyway, I mean, we I, I will say that we, we bothered Liz a lot during filming mm. about season two because everyone was so excited about working on season one, which is, I think that was very um, significant, the fact that, even while we were filming just the first season, everyone was talking about, can't wait to do this again, mm -hmm. which is crazy, because filming was nuts. <laughs> yeah, I think we kind of had so Stockholm Syndrome going on by the end. I think so. I, oh, I can I hear you so much better now. I down the stairs coming in one yeah, morning. I like, was stumbling down the stairs to get ready to do Brad's makeup, and I missed the last oh. step, and oh, like God. fell in to your guys' bedroom, and I was like, sorry, guys. This I just see, like, three things shoot out of the bed. I forgot that happened. And I was like, oops. I'm like, oh, no, I woke everyone up. Yeah, I'm going to whole... go feed the cats. <laughs> and then they'll come into the house, I'm like, no, no, all the cats, no, stay outside. You were the cat wrangler. Sometimes. Did you feed them? Mm -hmm. Did you feed them every morning? Well, because they were all standing outside the window looking sad, and I'm, of course I fed them. And then they learned how to dodge around me to get inside. Well, you know, they they were they were adorable. Aw, it's too bad we won't have them on filming next time. I mean, shrimp's been microchipped and fixed, so <laughs> it'll be fine. There we She's go. She's totally not at all destructive about climbing on things or chewing at wires. No. Oh, there is plenty of wildlife to go around. That was well. True. What if we had like a an animal ken thing. There were like three dogs that wandered in. There was some that... I don't think there was a horse, but there was an extra cat on top of the family of cats. There was just all sorts of animals. Just some an animal, like a riding... Like AJ had a riding hound. Yeah, Goliath. Goliath, the huge dog. That was a big dog. Yeah. I have a phone, I have a phone going on at the moment. Yeah, continue. No, I think we should just listen to this phone. Um, oh, okay. I can turn my microphone back on. <laughs> um, oh, no, it stopped. Never mind. Of course. Of course it did. Right. I do have to give a... What's your phone number? <laughs> <laughs> no, cat down! <laughs> um, mad props to Ryan Schultz, one of our camera dudes. Um, he wrangled those huge dogs. I'm kind of scared of dogs, like big ones. And they're like, all these huge dogs just kept wandering onto set. And um, there was this one time when we were filming this the scene that, you know, that we can't talk anymore about, where, like, Ryan is, like, <laughs> leading the dog as far away as possible while still trying to be, like, quiet enough that, like, it doesn't get picked up on, like, the microphone. And this dog was, like, soaking wet. And so he just ends up, like, hugging it, this wet dog, just to, like, make sure it doesn't, like, go running off into the scene again. So, yeah. yep. Oh, had he gone swimming in the pond? Is that what happened? Yes, and it oh. was it was so gross. Like that pond was disgusting. It was. Oh, poor Ryan. Um, so Ryan, if you're listening to this, I really appreciate all the hard work that you put into the project and mainly hugging that wet, gross dog. Don't worry. That'll that'll be in the <laughs> the bloopers. Cause there's a bunch of shots with that dog, and I believe Ryan at some point. There's one where they're like. Through the background. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh, man. Super serious scene. Random dog. Yeah, super serious scene. Oh, my gosh. Um, okay. So, like, 
gosh. I'm trying to go back to episode four. I'm trying to keep these pretty specific to, like, the episodes, because there's just so much stuff, guys. We did so many things. We did. We did. Good um, job. That's all. I was, I was really sad great. that the creeper clown never made it into the, into the shot. Like, I had this Ugh. terrifying hobo clown that I brought with, and it was in the goblin, the out-of-game or goblin shaman tent, and there are pictures of it. I've seen it. I was so happy, and it didn't make it into the shot. You can hardly see anything in the yeah. in the tents. Either one that were all very well done in terms of like set dressing, but like Absolutely. just the angles that we could work with. That was oh well. <laughs> I thought Juliana was gonna kill me. I didn't. I didn't put it in the bathroom. But at some point, when you guys are off filming, I'm like cleaning my brushes or cleaning my hair, doing something, and I just hear screaming. Because she has gone and she's changing the trash in the bathroom, and somebody had set the clown on the toilet, and in the process of like leaning over to get the, the trash, it fell over on her, <laughs> and she lost it. Oh, and I wish I could take ownership for that. that. I would love but, to have cleaned but, that, uh, but no. <laughs> I, it, that one wasn't me. I kept hiding it in Saker's bed. Okay, I'm so a terrible, explain, terrible explain this clown. I'll go get it. It's it, just a second. Oh, I'll be right back. I, I didn't. Oh, all right. <laughs> she loves um, this clown. We kept taking the clown out, and she kept putting the clown back. Oh my um, gosh. Yeah, I, like Kat and I had. We both had the mission of just like trying to scare Saker. Like we were going to go sit out in the woods. Like when he was like walking somewhere, and just be like head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees and toes. <laughs> and then she comes up with this thing. Did it work? Oh, so, like so. What happened? You guys kept putting it into Saker's bed, and then what? Nothing. I don't. Yeah, he dealt with it. He's he's very good at um, accepting like pranks. <laughs> and moving on, or, like, throwing it back. He makes a very good target for that kind of thing because he knows it's not personal, but his reactions are great. He gets, like, like a big fake smile and terrified eyes that, um... <laughs> and then yeah. he, like... It's sadly, we all know exactly what you like, mean. Yeah. a nice, weak comment because he's got that, like... He's got that rapper thing going where he can just think on the fly really quick, quickly, mm -hmm. and it's just really fun to do that, like back and forth with him, and I'm a terrible person, that... You are. You are a terrible person. It was also person. a really... Uh, up, there was an upsetting Ronald McDonald clown that's about that size that made it in there, too. I don't remember the Ronald... Darn, just sitting there. I do remember that clown, though, that you... I, I think I'm more afraid of it than Saker is. Well, that's why we didn't put it's, it in your it's, bed. Um, oh, God. That, that would have been is terrible. Also, because I was sharing a bed with you, and I didn't want you wedding. <laughs> <it. laughs> that would have been <laughs> the worst for you. Not nope. that we spend much time actually sleeping, but... I think you were so tired, you wouldn't have even noticed. You would have just collapsed. Oh, good. You know, though, you know, wow. speaking, though, of things in people's beds... Uh, <laughs> weird segue. Uh... I also recall that quite a few of us brought stuffed animals to uh, the filming. It was actually like a request. Yes. Okay. And uh, so, so what, what, what did you bring, Liz? Um, I brought Fernando. <laughs> Fernando. He's a uh, a cat, a stuffed tiger I made at Build a Bear with you know two of my very closest friends from college. So. Uh, his favorite food food is human flesh. Probably. I don't know. That makes sense. Um, I think uh, I think that was a good idea bringing yeah. those. Yeah, there's an extra pillow. I, I remember the stuffed unicorn the... head on a stick. Oh yes, we did. We had a stuffed unicorn head on a stick. That was another I... thing that we had. I had to move it to the one side because it was right at, like, smack in my head level trying to get into the kitchen. Yeah, I'm like, we, guys, do you mind if I put this somewhere else? We, st we stuck it in a banister because we were being funny. And, uh, yeah, that turns out t Kat is very tall. <laughs> and we almost killed her. I'm glad that you didn't die from a unicorn head. Me too. On a stick. <laughs> 
Well, so that the game... Then you would have been in a lot of trouble with the goblin fight. <laughs> <laughs> the guys were unaware of the stuffed animal thing, by the way. We had no idea. Oh, but you know what you did have? We... We had Eric AJ in the bathroom. bathroom. No, AJ. <laughs> oh, it was AJ. It was I creepy. We, we, we pulled crap pranks on each other apparently a lot. Not just this clown thing. Uh, I stuck. I had the little paper puppets of everybody, all the Foxdales from our Kickstarter video thing. And um, so I just stuck them all around the house. And I was looking at like AJ and I was like, what do I do with this one? And I was like... What's the worst place to put her? It's like, I should put her in the boys' bathroom. So I Right did. above the toilet. So <laughs> as we're doing our stuff, we have AJ staring right at us. It was great. I don't know why he doesn't just move her. I mean, well, I also stuck uh, a bunch of, ta like, tampons and pads and stuff in the boys' bathroom. Like, we put it, like, right in the middle of the floor. We were, like, and we wanted to go back and check to see if you guys just walked around it or if, like, you actually moved it. No, no, I cleaned it up. I thought it was the, the tenants before. I didn't realize oh. it was... I'm, I'm a married guy. Stuff like that doesn't bother me. Yeah, but any other guy except for, like, maybe Rob, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted it to be, like, on the floor and then you guys just walking over it because you didn't want to touch it. That would have made my day. So the... Um the paper puppet of Brian actually does show up in episode 5 on the wall. Yes, it does. Yeah. It does, in fact. We can talk about that when we get to episode 5, but I'll have to make an actual note to do so. Case it is. All I'm right. not nibbling on the edges. I'm not nibbling on the edges. What are you talking about, Kat? All right. I want to hear from KT. Um, so the, the post-production stuff for this episode... Um, we had, if I remember for episode four, um, this, I don't remember, actually, as far as, like, new, first time you had to, like, work on, like, a certain color or something, gosh, this was all, like, sooner than the filming was, and I'm literally, like, blanking. KT, what I'm was it like to color this episode? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay. Not totally clear on, like, your first part of your question there. I don't know either. But, um, I, don't. I think I'm still not, like, totally happy with how some of it came out in the in the goblin's tent. Because um, the, the two different angles of looking at the shaman and looking at everyone else had pretty different color to start with. Um, which I don't know if, like, most people would notice, but, you know, looking at it in detail, I was just like, how do I get these yellows closer together? So can you explain everyone too, like what is it you actually do as a color artist? Sure. Like why is it so important that we have you? Because <laughs> um, it is. <laughs> what I do is I make sure that in any given scene, the different colors are not like like super red in one shot and like super blue in another or something. Um, kind of hit a baseline of what everything is. And then the other thing that I do is, like, make the in-game and out-of-game things look different. Right. Because that's, like, a big part of um, trying to make, like, a real distinction between those, like, Lorpo vision versus out-of-Lorpo vision. Right. The, I remember when we were talking about um, how to do it, it's like the Larper vision is more vibrant, more saturated, has a little vignette on it, kind of like, you know, you've gone in this other world. Um, I have more interesting things to say about an episode that hasn't come out, though, so... That's that's fine. We'll, we'll talk again, I'm sure, yeah. when episode 7 releases. <laughs> um, but, like, I, 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 I love the fact, though, that so much of, like... Because we did a lot of stuff to differentiate between those two, like, worlds. It wasn't just... Um, I love the fact that it wasn't just the costuming, it wasn't just the fact that we actually used a different lens, and um, we even, I think, shot it at a different frame rate um, to give it, like, a different feel. But, like, the fact that we went, like, like the, the color correction is different. The the vignette is very important. Like, I think that's, <laughs> it's very subtle, but it's definitely there. Yeah, it's um, like, if you take it away, it has a very different feeling. Yeah, and, and a vignette uh, is, like, that black, like, kind of like a border -ish. It's actually kind of happening around me, I think, just because I'm lit by my computer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. For an example. 
<laughs> Love it. Um, and, 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 and then it also goes to, and hopefully we get um, Chris on here eventually, but like the music's different depending on like which version that you're in and that sort of thing. So um, I, 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 good, good job, KT. Good job. Thanks. It's a team effort. I love it. Um, I'm trying to think. Okay, so I, I do remember that the goblin tent was like, it was hard in terms of like the color. Yeah. Some, I mean, obviously I wasn't there for filming for season one, which hopefully I'll be around for at least some of season two. Um, but, so I don't know exactly what the setup was like. I'm guessing just the angle of light coming in through the tent. Like, the yeah. quality of light was probably just really different on those two different angles, which is hard to correct for. Um, it was a tough space to light. Yeah. Like, they worked really hard on getting it to where it was. I remember that. Mm -hmm. Was that the softbox incident? Yeah. yeah. Where it burned. Okay. <laughs> we were like, I smell burning. <laughs> Something is literally burning. <laughs> yeah. Did you burn down the tent? No, we burnt one of the soft boxes. Okay. Which is more expensive. Yeah, the tent would probably have been easier to replace. <laughs> I would have loved if the tent had gone on fire instead. Because that would have been several hundred dollars less. Oh, well. <laughs> Fish bosh. Thank you, donors. <laughs> <laughs> That's where your money goes. Fang for burnt soft boxes. Oh, my God. Basic adventuring, where everything is fantasy and on fire. <laughs> yes. Um, golly. Oh, so episode four is... All right, all right, all right, all right. I love this part. I want to hear from everybody what your favorite part about episode four was. I liked it when Echo defended me. That worked out real well for me. I'll be yeah, real selfish you, on this you one. Didn't, you didn't die. <laughs> I didn't die. Yeah. At least, at least not yet, Elias Thompson. <laughs> Specifically. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so it's the first time that Karen actually, like, really stands up for herself. Um, and for something. A goblin. I, yeah. No, I, I actually really love the, uh, the special effects on the ice ball. I thought that was really well done. Um, like, because we, when we were doing the scene, I think, like, we had our just blank palms, and then I think they gave us like a tennis ball at one point just to help with our throwing of, of and, and I was like you man did throw I tennis balls. I saw yeah <laughs> I'm like I don't know how this is gonna work but whoever's doing that more power to them and, and it turned out really great I was I, I really enjoyed the special effects on that Brandon Fox does a really good job with all the the effects um, I think also in this one we saw um, like uh, AJ's um, transportation. Um, oh, that was so good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is not the sound effect that no. Phil puts in there, but <laughs> it could be. It should have been. It should have been. No, uh, was... All right. Oh, what? What? No, no. I just I was gonna say that was so well done. Like how you made her disappear from one and reappear in the other, and. Um, you know, Saker obviously playing off of it so well. That whole "oh my god, I hate this" sort of stuff, and uh, I, I, the effects in that 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 episode in particular were really impressive to me. All right, Cat, uh, what was your favorite moment in episode four? Um, well, I forgot to do my homework and took a nap instead, so <gasps> I think that this is an. Ep I was at wizard school for four weeks. Okay, I had a twelve-hour travel day yesterday. So. Legit, legit. Um. But uh, I think this is from episode four. It's the 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 um, AJ and Saker, sorry, the the um, Umbra and uh, and Gleum interactions when the two of them are like snarking at each other, and the, like the, when they like pointing at each other when they do the 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 bit that was in the trailer where they you know I think the, it was the box episode two. Chain. Yeah, that was episode two. But if you want to talk about Oops. something some bickering, it would be like the moment where we discover wait. How did Umbra, like, and all of these Foxdales just show up in the Goblin Shaman's tent? Because, yep. what? And then Umbra's like, hey, I got this thing that I'm com I am in tune with Gleum with because it's bound to our souls. souls. Yeah, basically. 
and um, they're gonna have a lot of. They just have a lot of things bound to their souls. They've got this magic item. They've got this thing draining their soul energy from their hand. Probably all kinds of other things because they've been playing for a while, just accumulating. <laughs> just there, you're right. So like, I, I think this is a general consensus that the, the interaction between those two is is enjoyable. Very Hilarious. So. Also, really enjoyed Saker at the end when he accidentally uses the amulet incorrectly. Yes, in episode six. Oh, wrong episode. Yeah. Back to mute. I'm not the only one. <laughs> That was great. <laughs> okay, I mean, Talk to be me. fair, how many times I've actually seen them, it's like... And I bet Liz knows these, too. Wait, what do I know? <laughs> What's in episode four? <laughs> uh, lots of things. Some arguing. Um, I could talk about my favorite bit, maybe they'll, like, help jog some people's memories. <laughs> I think I think at this point we should have started with Liz and KT who have seen it sooner slash or wrote it. But <laughs> all right, well, let's so let's do KT and then we'll do Liz. Um, my favorite part's definitely when Echo stop, sort of like storms out of the tent, all determined, and then has to come back because <laughs> she doesn't know where she's going. Yep, I loved that bit. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I gifted you, that bit. You gifted it. You did. You gifted it. Because she's like, I'm going. And then boop, 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 boop. And then goes out. And then wonderful beat where, like, the music cuts out. And everyone's like, whoa, man. She grew some, like, balls, man. What's happening? And then she pops her head back in. Like, one of those, like, awkward, like, so we're going in the same direction after we said goodbye kind of moments. And... Uh, <laughs> I have no idea where I'm going. <laughs> I love it. Um, all right, Liz, what's your favorite moment for episode four? I'm going to say, like, the scene at the end where, um, you know, you and uh, AJ and Saker have run ahead, and uh, Chloe also have run ahead for quesadillas, and Brad's staying behind, and Brad's just an amazing actor. Like, he, his face gives, like, so much nuance, and he has so much makeup that it's hard to do that nuance, I imagine. Um, and just that whole, like, you know, really fast, you know, into LARPO vision, out of LARPO vision. It's just, you know, I think that's my favorite transition out of all of them, so. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he is a really good actor. And then Mo appears, and everyone gets excited. And she has a boar guy, and th I thought that was pretty great. Yeah. She toads dies, goes, just so. Just so. Which kind of negates the fact that we gave her a contact lens in the beginning. At all. Eh. Oh, I'm sure uh, it helps the effects person track it or something, right? That We did it for a reason. It was totally planned from the beginning, I'm sure. Well, uh, it was a, if it, the effects didn't work out. Legit. I, I agree. I do. Not, I thought it added to her character, and then we got we get to see it later, so it's, it's not do. like it's been wasted. So It's true. Um... Okay, my favorite moment was actually, it's very small. Maddie did a really good job editing this one, um, where you see uh, range, Rangers, uh, well, by my reckoning, it's just past four or whatever. It's like time for dinner. And if you watch, both Echo and Weum both look to the sky and look confused. And that is one of my... It's just this little tiny detail, but if you watch um, a lot of the acting, like, there, there's just, like, these really great moments that um, add to the humor of, of the script. I thought that was... So that, that to me, is the best. Um, okay, uh, so... That's the garage door. If you can hear that. All right. Uh, At least it's not five planes. Five planes... Just, you know, <laughs> and aviation day. Sound. Yes. <laughs> oh, the pilot filming. Oh, my gosh. Okay. No, okay, the planes have stopped. Now who's mowing their lawn? Why, guys? Why? Or uh, hover bee. There was a bee. Just, okay. So, comments from everybody on episode four. I don't know if anybody else is looking at these. But um, most of them are very simple and say, Momo. And I like, that's it. So... To all of you who love Momo, you're welcome. Yay! We love her, too. 
Um, also really glad that you're excited because we are as well to have her. Um, thank you, Status LARP, who seems also very excited to be watching our episodes. He said that, uh, that this episode was quite epic and that he's excited for the next one, which would be out, and he's probably presumably watched it. Um, Katie Leffler says, Momo, the hype is real. Great job on this episode, guys. The story is getting really interesting. Good job, Liz, for writing such an interesting story. Um, but thank you, Katie. Glad that you like it. Uh, oh, oh. Hey, you guys know how a lot of people didn't like the opening and thought it was, like, you know, maybe not the best opening for some reason? I don't understand. Uh, we have S.L. Piazza, who says, That song is now stuck in my head. Thank you. Oh, never mind. I didn't read all of it. <laughs> 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 it's not the opening, which I wish it was about, because I want to be justified. No, he's talking about the song at the end of the episode, which we never mentioned. It is a green one by Volsanger. And it goes... And they're all made out of tiki tacky and they all look just the same. And a so. green one, and a green one, and a green one. Because they're talking about goblins. In case nobody knew, the end song is talking about goblins. Well, you know, there's only so much in our gene pool. Mm, and a green one, and a green one. I like the, the discussion that was here about the, uh, the far too short. Um, fr from a technical standpoint, scripted series and YouTube in general, you don't want to make episodes too long because people lose interest. Um, the kind of time frame we're working at is, they're about the max size you should be making a scripted series episode, frankly, because uh, there's that sweet spot in there, and if you go too long, they just they tune out. So that's why they're as short as they are. It's not because we want to take things away from you guys. But thank you very much for the comment uh, in clue about wanting them to be longer. That that means we're doing something right. So If they were longer, I wouldn't be able to watch them at work. Ten minutes? I can't quite justify that right now. But five minutes? Sure, let me just tilt my computer screen a little bit so people can't see what I'm doing. I mean, it's all a Google Analytics thing. Like any scripted series, you could see after that six-minute mark people just stop tuning in. So this is done by design. Um, and finally, uh, I want to um, point out TARDIS Girl 11's comment. First of all, TARDIS Girl, who? Doctor Who. Um, she says a few things, but um, namely, she says, uh, thanks to you guys and AJ, um, I will finally... Uh, join first LARP because of how much I love the series. So she's going to start LARP, start LARPing. Gosh, I can't talk. Slurping. Um, she's going to be slurping. LARPing. Um, because she saw Basic Adventuring and she says thank you for making the series and yeah, I'm just thank you. I appreciate that comment. TARDIS Girl 11. I okay. started LARPing because of the series, sort of. Did you? Really? Well, I mean, I haven't, I hate camping, I really hate camping, so eventually, but I, I, I uh, signed up for wizard school because of, yay wizard school, yay LARPing, I miss LARPing, I miss you guys, and then I found out that you were in a different weekend than me, and I'm like, no, Kristen, we're three weeks apart, and then I ended up staffing it anyway and got to see you. You did. It was pretty awesome. That was a great LARP. If anybody else got to do the wizard LARP, let me know. Like, let us know. We, I mean, we probably know you, actually, <laughs> or met you. But, uh, or if you're interested and are thinking about doing it next year, also let us know, because I'm already signed up. And I'm also going to the winner thing, the Yuletide thing. But that's another thing. Okay. It's okay. so much okay. closer than Virginia. Right? It's in Ohio. Okay. Okay. Staying on cards. Topic. Topic. Did that, that, all right, restarting my brain. Um, next section. Thank you, everybody, for the comments. You're awesome. Give us more comments and tell us what you think. Woohoo! And then that goes to trivia. I was like, there's this next part that I gotta talk about. That's really important, guys. Um, if you haven't noticed, 
there's this little eye information-y thingy right over here. And it's got episode four, so you can go check that out. But it also has some poll questions. So if you click that little thing, it'll drop down, like over here. And you, too, can answer these trivia questions. Trivia question number one. What were the mascot kittens on set named after? Was it one, or A, astronauts, B, Lord of the Rings characters, C, Southern Cuisine, or was it D, Star Wars characters? Mm. You all decide. <laughs> Am I allowed to answer? No. Yes, you can, but one moment. I have to find the sound effects <laughs> thing. Where are you? I... Oh, oh, oh. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. I need a show of hands. Was it... Were they named after astronauts? Eh? Anybody? Anybody? Right. No. Were they named after Lord of the Rings characters? Anybody? No? No. How about Southern Cuisine? <laughs> bing, Wait. bing! Bonus question. Bo bonus round. Bonus round. Okay, so, what's the bonus round? So this is Shrimp. I renamed her Grand Admiral Prawn. Oh. After, yes, Star and Wars. I saw <laughs> and I saw Timothy Zahn at a convention, and I told him that, and the pun hurt him just a little bit, and he laughed. It was great. <laughs> That's awesome. So somewhat also D. <laughs> CN, CN kind of D. Yeah, I like it. And Grand Admiral um, Prawn is going to be canon again, so everything is amazing. So what were the name of, of the kittens? And the so cats? all the cats, so there were three kittens and then the mother. Um, so when we first found them, uh, we named the first one. We only thought there was one kitten, and we were like, we should name him Grits. Because he's a survivor. Cause we found him out in the wild and didn't seem to have an owner. We're like, he's grits. He's got some grit. And then we found he had a, a sibling, a little sister. And we're like, ah, oh, what goes with grit? And we're like, well, the grits? Shrimp goes with grits. <laughs> so we named her Shrimp because shrimp and grits. And then it turns out they had another sibling who was orange. And we decided, wait, what goes with shrimp and grits? Cheese. Cheesy shrimp and grits. Thank you. Yes. So, and then the mother we called Big Mama, I believe, um, because she was the cook. Yeah. So, but yeah, it was all, it was basically grits. They were named after cheesy shrimp grits. Because who grits doesn't love that? Oh, man. They were wonderful. All right. I was watching grits climb up Maria while she was teaching us fight choreography. They were all over the place, man. Like, he we literally climbed up her and just like rode her into battle. It was amazing. True story. She's not even exaggerating. Battle. That's not a hyperbole. All right, next trivia question. What is Liz's least favorite thing to write? Is it A, love scenes, B, fight scenes, C, dialogue, D, comedy, or is it E, drama? And I should have put, like, an extra, like, F, all of the above. But I didn't. Hmm. And I also don't know 100% the answer for this one. So <laughs> this, might, <laughs> this might need the answer. So I'm going to be answering this trivia question, too. All right. Um, everybody raise your hand if you think it's love scenes. All right, we got two, three. We got three. All right. Uh, fight scenes. I'm going to raise my hand on that one. Uh, so I don't know. I guess we we think it's a lover or a fight scene, Liz. What's the what's the answer? What do you hate writing the most? You know, I hadn't really thought about it, but now that you've broken it down, it's hard to like, you. Know, it's a, a very different sorts of hate because like when writing love scenes, <laughs> I just cringe the entire time. Like I'm like eh, eh, as I'm writing it. Uh. Which is why there are no love scenes in <laughs> Basic Adventuring 101. <laughs> Truth. And, um... But your fight scenes are or just... Or are there! Or are there! The fight know. scenes, you know, it's just... 
it's hard because I don't have much experience with it. So, and that's why there are no fight scenes in uh, Basic Adventuring 101. Clear, yeah, not a single one. <laughs> totally none. Um, so I'm going to say for pure discomfort, love scenes. All right, you guys get it. And I don't. Wait, this is a good sound that it... <laughs> I need a womp, song. Womp. Yeah, is there a womp womp? There's no womp womp. There's got to be a womp Wait, 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 here it is. <laughs> that was so appropriate, and I love it. All right, final question. This isn't really a trivia question so much as a opinion question. What's your favorite out of LARPO vision character? Is it Karen, Sarah, Will, Tony, or Abigail? Uh, raise your hand if it's Karen. Raise your hand if it's Sarah. Will. I love, I love all of my babies. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm making you choose between your children. This is Sophie's choice, Liz. My choice isn't listed, Brian. Well, I, I only could put five <laughs> options in the character card Wait. whole thing. Oh, you know, there's always... I'm going to go with, like, F of a uh, Goblin Nate in episode one. Oh, oh pilot episode. What a callback. <laughs> he was pretty great. The guy who loses his glasses in episode one. I, um... I like quote... I like you. Say you. Whenever I'm, like, looking for my glasses and I find them, I'm like, found them! Like, just like he does <laughs> all the time. So, and those were... Pop up in the middle movies. of a conversation. Yep. Found... Yeah, right in the middle. Found them. <laughs> Any reason not to continue? Uh, but they were your glasses, Liz, weren't they? They were my glasses. That's right, because Nate doesn't wear them. Uh, yeah. Okay, all right, so that's fair. What are your guys' favorites that apparently aren't on this list? I don't know. You haven't Besides said Liz. mine yet. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay, so there was Tony and Abigail. And Oh, we got two raised hands for Abigail. Ooh. Why? Why do you guys like Abigail? Overly dramatic. Take a drink. Yeah, she gets really enthusiastic even to the point that I asked you if I could change color in one of the scenes because she was getting so enthusiastic explaining her backstory of her character out of game. That's right. In episode five, that yeah. has happened. That, I got really excited about that. I... I I will agree with you guys, and Abigail is the LARPer that I, um, I'm probably the closest to being, because I'm, like, the, the heavy role player, it's like, very in, intense into, like, being in character, and she's pretty awesome. Cool. All right, guys. Well, let's answer some questions, shall we? Because it's about that time. And let's I start. Camera. God damn it. <laughs> Beep. Liz, this question's for you. Okay. It's from Elias Thompson. He asks, did you write all of season one at once, or did you write the rest of season one after funding? Which would you recommend, and what was the process like if you didn't write it all at once? Um, well, I did write the pilot first, and then you know, we were very aware that we might not get funding. In which case, it's like, well, I'd be spending hours on something that might not happen. Um, but I did do a rough outline, um, as I did, you know, the pilot, just so I could keep track of things that, you know, callbacks I wanted to do later. Um, so after, well, before we got funding, as we were working on funding for uh, the rest of season one, I did write everything. Um, I think that was a good process because as we were like doing the fundraising, you know, we were editing and being like, okay, what can we cut? What can't we cut? How can we like make this work with the budget that we might end up getting? So, um, but that's also how I work. I work very well in like concentrated chunks. Uh, it's about finding what works for you. If you're a 15 minute a day writer and you really crank out a lot of good stuff in that time, you know, do what works for you. Did I answer the question? I felt like I kind of rambled. I don't, okay, uh, you didn't write it all at once. 
Did you write the rest of it after funding? What would you recommend? What was the process like if you didn't write it all at once? I think so. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. I, I remember that we had a lot of um, drafts as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's um, a lot of, I would rewrite everything, send it off to you. You guys would tell me everything was terrible and I had to change it. And I, I would. I don't know about that. That 90% no, no. of everything was terrible and I had to change it. Yeah, yeah, that was still the good 10%, man. Yeah, was, yeah. We're like, this is funny, don't, don't change a thing, don't change a thing. The rest of it has to go, Liz, just get it out yes. of here. Pretty much. <laughs> So um, if you're working with somebody, just remember it's not personal when they're making changes. You know, everybody's working towards the best product. Because sometimes it can be really hard just to like let it go. And I think as a script writer, that is especially terrifying. Is that first you have to let it go to your you know, producer, to your director, to all these other people who want changes made. But then you give it to the actors and you hope for the best. Um, and I am, if there's any good quality in my writing, if it has made you laugh, it is because of the actors, not because of my words. I don't know. I laugh pretty hard when I read that script sometimes. Which, uh, if you guys get the production book, which um, some of the backers will be getting, and um, it will be available for sale as well, um, you'll be able to read all the original script stuff, like the actual like directions, which are part of the hilarity that is the script. <laughs> this is just table stage directions are maybe the best part. <laughs> oh man. Okay. I can't even next remember question. them right now, but I remember that they were hilarious. Uh, they were pretty much the best, and they are as well in season two, having just read them. Ha ha ha! I can't tell you anything. Uh, next question from Eric. Hi, Eric. Are you watching this? Um, if each of you were an evolution, which one would you be? Let's uh, let's start with Blair and you pass it down the Congo line. So I, I have to pronounce it right this time, I guess? Yeah, no big <laughs> Poetron, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I, I would go va Vaporeon. Liz? Right. Oh, uh, I would go Sylveon. Because I want to be a magical French girl, Eve. Yeah, it's, it's the love one specifically, with all the ribbons and pink and friendship. It's magic! Uh, KT. Flareon. It's red. Oh, man. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I like fire a lot. Maybe too much. <laughs> I always oh. pick Charmander. <laughs> As one should. Alright, Kat, what about you? I don't know what that is. <gasps> I know, I don't... Is that a Pokemon thing? I don't know. Yes! Yes, of course it is. I missed the whole Pokemon thing. I, I just, like, n hit it the wrong time as I was growing up, and I just missed it all, and I'm probably going to get the Pokemon Go thing, but I didn't want to have it at Wizard School and be like, I'm at Wizard School chasing Pokemon. So, it would, is that... It's man. okay. I missed it all when it was happening. I'm I'm actually watching the, sh the, like, various TV shows now. I don't even I don't even know all of them. I totally missed it all. <laughs> now, they did yeah. play... They played the Pokemon theme at the dance at Wizard Prom in Session 3, and that... It was kind of amazing, and everyone was singing along, and I was just like, I don't know what's happening. I want to be <laughs> this entire phenomenon. <laughs> <laughs> there are just some uh, 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 culture things that I completely missed. Like, I've never seen the, the Rebecca Black's Friday video. I've never heard it all the way through, and I intend to keep it that way, honestly. But, like, there's some just things that I just completely missed the boat on. I'm like, Poco, Poco what now? Uh. Poco what now? Um, I would be Jolteon, so, because I Yellow like is I'm going to go best. with that one. All right. Fire. So Flareon, Jolteon, we did it. We are a very unbalanced EV team. <laughs> All right. Next question. Okay. Sorry. I'm pushing because I'm trying to keep us slightly on schedule and on topic. Uh, and you invited Jake. the wrong person to this hangout? <laughs> I'm the wrong person for this hangout. I'm really Liz is typically the person who keeps me on track. 
Why do you I require do a lot of wrangling? Eh, you know. Eh. <laughs> Worst script supervisor ever. Wait, am I script supervising now? Because I'll get my really tired and angry hat on. <laughs> Continuity! Uh, so from J.P. Rakoff. I'm going to say it different all the times because he said it's not a real name. Uh, you called Blair the dad of the shoot. Was he a strict dad or a cool dad? He was the cool Canadian dad. Yeah, he was like the cool Canadian dad. He's like, oh, did you hurt yourself? Here's like a lollipop and some health care. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you and Mo bring down a box of Cana uh, authentic Canadian Timmy Ho's? Uh, t t well, Tim Hortons, yep, yep. Yep, and uh, Pizza Pops. Pizza Pop. Pop. Yep. Which I, I actually I neglected just... to try the Pizza Pops. Oh, they're good. I noped I, out of that. I uh, I actually bought some the other day. I was going to take a picture and, 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 and share it, and I'm like, nah. <laughs> well, I we didn't... had never seen them before. We're like, what's a Pizza Pop? <laughs> she was so excited. By she, I mean Momo. She was so excited to, to bring these things down. They're like, these are the best things ever. And I'm like... They're, they're pizza pops. They're, they're a snack. I mean, I'm sure they have an equivalent down here. They just call it something else. So I mean, we have things sort of like it, but not... But, like, the texture's very unique. It is unique. Um, <laughs> in I'm a good quite, way. In a good way. I, I, I'll debate that. Um, I'm not quite sure if that's real flour. <laughs> it's something that keeps things together, though. No, I, it, I mean... It, so the people there were just, they're all really cool people, and, and after a couple of days, most of my shooting was done, and I just wanted to be as useful as possible, so anything that needed to be done, I was more than happy to do it, so um, from removing ticks from people's hairs to shuttling them back and forth between shoots and getting them water, whatever needed to be done, so if that's a dad thing, that's a dad thing. I'll accept that. Oh, yeah, you did, you did let us put Madison in your trunk. Yeah, oh, think, yeah! That's true. That's oh. true. Actually, that I think happens. we drove Madison back from a shooting with her in the trunk at her request, so... <laughs> I wasn't very happy vine. about that. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. That was the best vine ever. This is what we do to... Wait, what? I don't remember. This is what we, we do to people who don't do their jobs. Oh, that's right. I'll, I'll direct. I'll direct. Just And then <laughs> slam. If you haven't checked out our vines, you should. They're really funny. <laughs> You can Got find them through our. Uh, you find them through our Twitter page, mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, and then Blair also helped fix the the internet, and he dealt with the the dude who came over to fix the internet, and then like the hot tub, the hot tub, like he just took care of things because we needed somebody to take care of us because we couldn't. <laughs> Well, we had a mom as well, and Julianne, so, uh, Juliana. So we uh, we we filled both roles, and we did what we could. And um, it was funny. She took me aside at one point, and she's like, "I need you to have a dad conversation with them." And I'm like, I, "Okay, I'm not that much of a dad." <laughs> I'm sorry, Juliana. If you want to ha deliver a message, you could deliver the message. But no, I'm not gonna be like fire and brimstone guy. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, um, I have one more question uh, from Robert Story asking who has the best hair. And that was it. That's all he asked. Diversia. Besides this other question that I'm not asking. Well, we know the, <laughs> the, the answer to the other one was Frederico. Oh, yes. Frederico Clearly. was the best boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Federico, the staff, right? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. skull, specifically, yeah, the skull. on the staff. Definitely. That thing was so heavy. Holy smokes. Uh, but, I mean, it's... I, I mean, I could go around and just, like, say something nice about everybody's hair. But Tiverja had pretty, like... It's her unique characteristic. It's very... Yeah, yeah it's, like, her thing. Yeah. Her I hair's pretty amazing. To, I managed to hide a latex copy of my face in her hair... And what? it was supposed to scare everyone up. Yes, she she ended up taking a nap before you guys came back and took it out. But like, I we pinned it, and so it was just this latex copy of my face peeking out the back of her head. And so I would see her in profile, and I would see my nose out of the back of her head, and it was really bizarre. 
but it was supposed to scare all of you guys. And then it like you you filmed for longer, and then she took a nap, and then it came out. But I've got pictures. But yeah, there was just my face in the back of her head. I mean, let's be honest. In most scenarios, the answer would be Kristen. But Taverge's hair, I mean, you can't understand it until you see it. It's Which, just, yeah. it's huge. <laughs> it's just another way to explain it. We'll I see it, in it for like 20 minutes, and it was barely mm-hmm. tamed. Yeah, you'll, but you'll see it in episode 7. If, you have a, if you're not familiar with this main, this glorious main, you will be soon. This, this glorious main on this even more glorious person. Truth! Like, She's just amazing. All right. Well, I'm try- I've been trying to keep this to an hour, so it's an hour and five minutes. We're going to call it to a close here. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining the second episode of Basic Discussion 101. Um, if you had a question and we didn't get to answer it, make sure you give it to us, and we'll put it on to the next one. Um, also, make sure you comment on our other videos. Episode 7 will hopefully be coming out next week. Uh, because our sound guy should be done with his feature film and be able to do it. Yep, that's all I got. Anybody got anything else you want to say? Thanks for watching. Solid. All right. Well, thanks again, and we'll catch you guys later. Now, how do I stop this thing? Yeah. It's the stop broadcast button. All right.